Hi guys, Aaron here with Ghost Raptor Gaming and Guns, and if your favorite memes are Marty Robbins memes, then go ahead and hit the subscribe button, because today, guys, we got a big iron for you. Sort of. This is the Heritage Manufacturing Rough Rider in 22 Long Rifle. Now, before I get into anything, what is my relationship with Heritage Manufacturing? Well, I don't have a relationship with them. They didn't send me this gun. I bought this gun, lightly used, at Bullseye Shooting Supplies in Woonsocket, Rhode Island for $120. The price range on these guys, new, goes anywhere from about $120 up to just over $200. So they are fairly budget-friendly guns. Now, if you're new to the channel, what I like to do here is I like to review the gun front to back, top to bottom, and I talk about all of the features and caveats of those features as I go through the firearm. Now, first thing is first, let's talk about the sights. The sights are a very traditional setup. You do have a standard front sight blade and then a rear sight uh, U-notch, which is fairly typical um, of older service style firearms. The sights themselves are quite good, but you do need to cock the hammer in order to see the rear sight. However, uh, once you actually have your sight picture, they're fairly squared off. Equal height, equal height is easy to achieve uh, and really aid in accuracy. Now, the barrel itself on this one, it's a six inch barrel, but they come in a variety of barrels. There's short ones, like on the barkeep, I think it's like a two inch barrel, and then they go all the way up to a 16 inch barrel, believe it or not. They are steel, they are well made, and the guns are accurate as a result. At least this one is. Underneath the barrel here, you have your ejector rod assembly. And what that is, is basically a long pin with a little finger catch on it right there. And that will push out your cases. So what you'll do is you'll go to half cock, you'll turn your cylinder to the next chamber, and you'll just push that back like that. And what that'll do is that rod will come out right there, as you can see, and it'll kick the case free, turn it two clicks to the next, cylinder, uh, next chamber, and do it again. And you can load new rounds in one at a time if you want. You know, eject the one, load one, turn it, eject the one, load one, that kind of thing. However you want to do it, that's the way it works. And since I'm on it, let's talk about the loading gate. I'm just jumping around just a little bit. The loading gate is a plastic affair, um, and it is very easy to open and close. The only issue that I noticed with it was... Uh, it's almost too easy. It is very uh, easy to accidentally close it while you're e ejecting rounds, and then when you go to load one, it is very easy to accidentally bump it, and then it'll close, and it makes the process more difficult. Um, so I didn't like that about the gun. Now, the frame itself, the frame is a uh, metal. It's a Zamac 5 is the name of that metal, and it is a zinc alloy. It's very similar to the Zinc Alloy ZMAC-3 that's used on high point firearms, particularly the slides on their pistols. Uh, while it's a nickel-based alloy, the high points are a powder-coated finish, and the finish is fairly durable on those. This, I'm not sure what kind of finish this is, but there are a lot of reports of the finish wearing off very easily and very early on in the gun's life cycle, so take note of that. The cylinder is a six-shot cylinder. It is steel, and it has a rebated kind of cylinder face, and we'll get into that later on, but they are a six-shot affair. They also make nine-shot models, and there are both six and nine shot cylinders available in 22 Magnum, which I always like the capability to drop in another cartridge into the same kind of firearm or just a simple part swap. And then bam, you have capabilities to fire another round. So I really like that. Now I didn't do it, but we'll get into why I didn't do that in just a little while. So moving back from there, we have the thumb safety. There is a manual thumb safety on the left side of the gun that you can see right here. Um, up is safe, down is off, or fire. It is indicated with a little bit of red paint so you know when you're on fire. And all that does is when you flip that safety on is it pushes the hammer back via a firing pin block. Now, is this a good safety? No, actually, I think it is a terrible safety and let's get into why I think it's a terrible safety. First of all, this whole motion of up and down at a 90 degree angle is a little awkward. 
The other thing that I noted about it is that all it does, like I said, is there's a little bit of a firing pin block in there, but it doesn't engage, it doesn't disengage the hammer or the trigger. So you can actually still cock this gun and pull the trigger. Now, some people say that that's good for dry fire exercises. You don't have to worry about damaging the cylinder face or your firing pin or anything like that. Um, but I don't think it's a very good safety. I don't think that's a great idea on its own. Furthermore, I would say it was a good idea if you could carry cocked in a locked, but just due to the fact that you can actually drop that hammer, um, it, it, it doesn't lend itself well to that. The other thing is when you cock the hammer back and you actually go to turn the safety off, it's really awkward to reach around the back of the hammer, at least for me, because I have smaller hands. Um, so it's a little awkward. You're not gonna draw this gun and turn your safety off at the same time. It's just gonna be very difficult to do that. Um, even with your off hand, it's gonna be difficult because you're gonna have to draw the gun and then as your hands come together, flip it down and it's just really, really awkward. Um, so I'm not a fan of that safety at all. I don't even know why they have that on there. I suspect it's just due to legal reasons. Um, and speaking of legal reasons, I should also take note that the frame is not it, it's not compliant with melting temperature laws or melting point laws in some states. So these aren't available in some states because of that. I don't know what that has to do with anything. It's not like you're ever going to shoot this gun to the point where it heats up so much it melts, right? But there you go. That information is out there. Now the hammer itself on this one, it appears to be a mimmed part. Um, metal injected molding that is. It is checkered and it is easy to actuate. Let's take a close up of the hammer right there. Checkered right at the top. Um, and it is quite nice. I like it quite a bit actually. Now the grip, you can get these in a bird's head model and they're supposed to be a little more ergonomic for people with smaller hands. This is a standard grip module that is on here now um, and most of the ones that you find are going to have this. The back strap is smooth. The front strap is smooth. It's a very traditional design like that. There is no annual loop or anything on the bottom. The grips are plastic. Um, these are faux mother of black faux, uh, faux black mother of pearl grips and they may or may not be produced by a completely different company. I noticed when I went to their website it seemed like they had a lot of different people who produced the grips. Um, they don't fit quite right. If you take a close-up look at the grip here, you'll notice that it actually extends past the back strap in a couple places on both sides. So it's not perfectly fit to the frame. Um, not that it's a huge issue. It's not abrasive or anything. It doesn't irritate your hands. It's a 22, guys. So no issues really there. Just take note that they will extend sometimes over the back strap. That didn't happen on the front strap on these, but it did happen on the back strap, right? So let's talk about the trigger. The trigger guard here is slightly elongated. And even when the hammer's cocked, the trigger moves forward ever so slightly, but it is easy to get a finger in there. Now, when it comes to actually firing the gun, obviously, by the way, this is a uh, what they call a four click hammer. So let's get into that real quick. First click is a safety notch. Second click is half cock, that's for loading and unloading. Third click does nothing. Uh, and then the fourth click sets the hammer. So let's listen to that one more time. Okay, once you have all four clicks, you are ready to fire. Now, the trigger itself is plastic, by the way. It is relatively flat faced, which is what you get with these older style guns. And there is zero take up, and then you have a pretty damn clean break actually. Um, and it comes up at about three pounds. It's a pretty good trigger. And it lended itself along with the fairly good sights to good accuracy. Now, how about accuracy? Well, let's get into that. Uh, let me show you some targets here. All right, so we have some targets here. And as you can see, I have three rounds, one there, one there, and one there. So that group's a little open, but these are the first shots I'm taking with this gun. I have a hit here, a hit here, and a hit out there. The groups start to get better as I go. There's one there, one is here, and one is there. And then down here, you've got like a one-inch group easily right here. 
Um, and then here, I have a hit here, a hit there, and a hit there. So one inch group here, that's pretty good. That's me standing seven yards with Federal Target Premium. The gun is capable of good uh, accuracy. And then I started to see kind of a phenomenon here where my point of impact was here and my, my point of aim was here and my point of impact was lower. And this began becoming more and more consistent as I went on. Now, I'm trying to figure out what's going on with the gun at this point. And then yeah, on this target, I noticed some significant point of aim to point of impact shifts. You know, I'm aiming way up here just to hit this one. And then here, I was aiming here and here. And you could see I was aiming, uh, as I was aiming up here, I was hitting very, very low there. And then same thing here. It really started getting, uh, it really started to open up. And my rounds ended up kind of being all over the place. I was aiming for the line here to hit down here. So I'm trying to figure out what's going on with the thing. And I have an explanation for that when we get to reliability. And as you can see, I had pretty good accuracy with the gun. Initially, uh, it was shooting point to aim, point to impact, and I think the gun is really capable of one inch groups. But you also note that right here, I had some significant point of aim to point of impact shifts. Now what caused that? Well, let's get into reliability with this gun. What was happening with the point of aim to point of impact shifts is this front sight that you saw earlier, and you're seeing right here, is actually not pressed in, it's not pinned in. There is a cut right there. It actually looks like it was made with a Dremel tool. And then the front sight blade is just glued in place, at least on this one. And what was happening was, as I fired more and more rounds through the gun, under recoil, the rear side of the front sight began to walk out and lift right out of that notch to the point where it was almost completely vertical instead of completely horizontal as it is now. And so I didn't take, I didn't notice that. So as I was shooting, I'm still getting a good sight picture because this thing is rotating vertically. And as I aim and fire, I'm actually aiming lower without knowing it. And then after um, about 125 rounds through this gun, that's when I had to call it quits on this gun actually because the front sight came completely off. The other issue I had with reliability, as you're seeing here, is that steel cylinder is a fully uh, countersunk rear breech face instead of a rear cylinder face, I should say, instead of like it is here on the Smith & Wesson Model 28 where each chamber is countersunk on the rear cylinder face to allow the rounds to drop in and stay flush. The cylinder on the Heritage Manufacturing Rough Rider is fully countersunk all the way through, and this led to a serious issue, rimlock. Now, rimlock generally is a term that refers to bolt-action rifles um, that use rimmed rounds, and sometimes what happens is one rim, if you don't load the, the gun right, one rim can get caught on another rim in the rifle's magazine, and it won't feed. And in this particular instance, what I mean by that, there might be a different term for it, cylinder lock, whatever, what have you, but what was happening was the rounds would work their way loose a little bit and it would get hung up on the breech face of the firearm. So I couldn't cock the hammer all the way. The cylinder wouldn't index and so I couldn't continue firing the gun. And so I had to disassemble and reassemble the firearm to make that happen. And speaking of that, it is a pretty standard affair here. Um, and we'll get into that in just a minute. But uh, the other issue I had with it was I inadvertently put the safety on it several times and then in addition to that I did have some light strikes with the firearm. Now rim fire cartridges are definitely less reliable than center fire cartridges. That being said, generally speaking if you pull the trigger and your 22 goes click instead of bang, chances are if you cock the rifle, handgun, whatever you have again and pull the trigger, chances are that round isn't going to go off. Right, I've experienced that hundreds of times. With this one, it did. So I could just cycle back around to that, what I thought would be a dud round, and it would fire again. So I had a lot of light strikes with this gun as well. So between the light strikes, the rim lock that I was experiencing in the cylinder, and then the front sight coming out of the gun, I completely disqualified this from testing and evaluation. Uh, it only had about 125 rounds for the gun, and I had all of those failures. So this particular model, is really just a dumpster fire 
Um, I'm sure there are some models out there that are really good and very reliable. I'm sure there's people who have had no issues with them, uh, with, with theirs. Um, but I just canceled the testing entirely on, on this one, guys. I didn't even get the 22 Magnum cylinder and try and fire that because with the front sights coming out with 22 long rifle, what's it going to do with the 22 Magnum, right? So I didn't feel comfortable spending the money or uh, just doing that in general, so I didn't do it on that one. So reliability is 1 out of 10. It's the least, literally the least reliable gun I have ever fired. Okay. Now, disassembly and reassembly, if you do want to swap the cylinder, is... I mean, if your gun is reliable, it is a fairly standard affair for single action guns. As you can see here, all you do is ensure the weapon is clear, bring the hammer back to the half cock position, and then what you can do is there's a little screw right there, you push that in, then you pull the cylinder locking pin out, and you can rock the cylinder right out of the side of the gun. Reassembly is the exact opposite. You just reinsert your cylinder, close your loading gate, and then you can uh, insert or start that cylinder pin in. Then you have to push that button down, which retains the cylinder pin. And you might have to wiggle the cylinder a little bit, finagle it, uh, play with it, you know. And eventually it will slide right in, function check the firearm, and you're good to go, right? So disassembly reassembly is a fairly easy process. If you do have a reliable gun and you do want to convert it to 22 Magnum, Go ahead and do that. I believe the spare cylinder is for $50 and under on the Heritage website. Uh, so overall, I am just... I like a lot of the features about the gun. I don't like a couple features of the gun. And I'm just kind of disappointed in its reliability. I wish it was a lot better. Um, I'm sure there's some great single action 22s out there made by Ruger or a couple different companies that are great. Unfortunately, this, doesn't, this wasn't one of them. Right. It just wasn't one of them. Um, I might do another single action 22 review later on if you guys are interested and if you like this kind of content. Furthermore, if you like this kind of content, please like, share, subscribe, and make sure you hit the notification bell so when I launch a new video, you know about it right away. Um, videos come out every Thursday at 4 o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And if you want to support the channel a little bit more, there's, of course, my Patreon. It's a dollar a month. It goes a long way to targets, ammo, that kind of stuff. really helps keep the project going here. And if you are not comfortable signing up for a subscription service during the dollar a month, I do have a GoFundMe set up right now. It's a, a currently a goal of $500. So if you want to make a one-time donation, link in the description to both Patreon and the GoFundMe, as well as like Bullseye Shooting Supplies. This has been Aaron with Ghost Charger Gaming and Guns. Thank you for tuning in. Have a nice day.